Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 29 on learning how to use your Raspberry Pi. If you've been through our earlier lessons, you already know how to boot up the system. You've learned Linux, work your way around the Raspberry Pi using the Linux command line. And then in the last few lessons, we've really started working on programming in Python and interacting with these GPIO pins. Kind of what we're trying to do is we're trying to and learn how to do things on the Raspberry Pi that we already know how to do on the Arduino. On the Arduino, interacting with these pins is very straightforward. The whole Arduino is really sort of designed around using those pins as inputs and outputs. But in the Raspberry Pi, we just got to kind of be a little bit more methodical in the use of the pins. In the last couple of lessons, we learned how to use the pins as outputs outputs, either as digital outputs or trying to simulate analog outputs using PWM. We did several examples like uh, dimming a, an LED and then turning an LED on and off, blinking it, and then positioning a servo. So at this point, if you've been through the lessons, and I hope you have, you should be fairly comfortable in using all of these uh, GPIO pins as outputs. The point that we're at now is how to use them as inputs, how to read from them. Well, to sort of introduce this, the simplest thing to read is a button, whether the button is pressed or whether the button is not pressed. That, my friend, is what we are going to do in this lesson. So you need to get your uh, gear out and you need to hook up this, uh, hook up this uh, circuit. You can see that we have two buttons. On the left button, one leg is hooked to pin 16. The uh, other leg of that button is hooked to the ground rail. And then we have the left leg of the right button hooked to pin 12. These are physical pins. And the right leg hooked to ground. And then we have the ground rail hooked to pin 6, physical pin 6, which is one of the grounds on the Raspberry Pi. So now we want to go in, get this hooked up. Then we want to go in and we want to sort of see how we're going to read from these pins. As you know, in these lessons, we're using Python. And so we will want to call up a Python uh, editor and we will want to start writing some code. So let's come to our terminal window, our uh, Raspberry Pi terminal window. And if you have been following along, you know that I created a folder called MyThon. And so if you go to your home directory, okay, and if you don't have one of those, you can make it with mkdir and then my Python. Since I already have one, I am not going to remake one. I like to go down in there because I get tired of having to type the path names. And if I go down into the folder, then I don't have to keep ch uh, uh, typing path names. So I'm going to go cd my Python. Okay, now I am down in my Python. Now let's create the program. And we are going to call the program buttons because there's two, plural, buttons.py down here. One, two. I've already got my circuit hooked up. Okay, so we are going to do a nano and then we are going to do a buttons.py. And as I've mentioned in the earlier lessons, I always like to give my Python programs, I like to give my Python programs the .py extension. You don't have to, but it just helps you to keep things organized. Okay, now what are we going to do? Well, one thing is, is that as we're reading from the buttons, we need to not just read real, 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 real fast. We need to kind of slow it down a little bit. So we're going to want to put some delays in there. So I'm going to say from time import sleep. And I like to import it this way because then to do a delay, you know, if I just said import time, then I would have to do the function time.sleep and then how long. If I say from time import sleep, then I can just give the sleep command, which would be like sleep point one would be point one of a second. Just a little Python tip there. All right. Now we need to get our GPIO library. So we're going to say import GPIO. Uh, I mean import RP little i. Capitalization matters. Big R, big P, little i dot GPIO. Okay. And import that as GPIO. <coughs> now we need to tell Python or tell the Raspberry Pi what pin numbering scheme that we want to use. I want to use just the physical pins because I can just look down here at the pins and I can figure out what's what using the physical pin configuration. And I'd set the physical pin configuration by doing GPIO.setMode. Okay. And then what mode do I want to set? 
at GPIO. To get the physical pin numbering system, what command do I put here? GPIO dot, do you remember? B-O-A-R-D, board. Okay, and that will use the physical pin numbering system. Now, I always like to name my buttons, or I like to name my pins with something descriptive. So I'm going to say button 1 is going to be equal to 16. Okay, so that's the button on the left is hooked to pin 16. And then I'm going to say button 2 is equal to 12. All right, that just makes it easier as we're doing the next commands. Now, Remember in Arduino we did pin modes where we would set things as inputs or outputs. You remember in our earlier lessons on the Raspberry Pi we were setting these GPIO pins as outputs. Now we're going to set them as inputs. Okay, So I'm going to go GPIO.setup just like before. But now I'm going to do which button? Button 1. And then I want it to be a what? GPIO. Before we always said GPIO.out this time. Can you guess? Yes, gpio.in. Note the capitalization. Okay, now, for these things to work right, you need pull-up resistors. You could come in and you could put pull-up resistors on the circuit, or you could just activate pull-up resistors that are already on the board. I'm going to choose to activate the pull-up resistor that's already on the board. All right. If you have trouble and if you do an application that that isn't working exactly right or you get a little noise in your signal, go back and do the external pull-up resistors. But I'm going to just activate an internal one. So you do that lowercase pull, up, down. And what is that going to be set at? It's going to be set as GPIO dot PUD underscore up. So I guess that's like pull-up device is up. All right. I think that looks pretty good. So understand, what does that mean? That means that what I'm doing with this command is if you look at that pin inside the board, it is tying that pin to 3.3 volts through a resistor. So if I'm just sitting there without pressing the resistor, that pin is going to see what? It's going to see 3.3 volts because there's no current flowing. And so it's just going to see through that resistor, it's going to see 3.3 volts. If I press the button down, that brings the pin down to ground. Yeah, current's going to flow through that resistor, but that 3.3 volts is going to drop across that pull-up resistor. And so all that pin sees is ground. So as you're just sitting there, it should see what? It should see high. It should see 1. It should see 3.3 volts. It should see true. When you press the button, that's a direct short to ground. The 3.3 drops across the resistor. When the button is down, it should read 0. It should read false. It should read, uh, it should read low. Okay, let's do the other pin. GPIO dot setup button 2. GPIO dot, it's going to be an input, and then we go pull <coughs> up, down, equal GPIO dot PUD underscore up, like that. Okay, so now I have instigated, I have put in my pull up resistors, I have defined my two pins as input pins. And so now, what am I ready to do? Well, I'm ready to just sit and read this thing. So what am I going to do? I'm going to create a while loop. So I'm going to say while. This is just going to be sort of an infinite loop, while true. I don't know if uh, true is capitalized or not. So I'm just going to say while 1, because 1 is always 1. This will loop forever. In uh, Python, we specify the clause with an indent. So I'm going to indent here. And now I'm going to read the pin if gpio dot input which button button one equal equal zero all right what does this mean gpio input means read from the gpio button one so we're reading so when we do this read what's it going to return a zero or a one or you could also think of it equivalently as a true or a false if it's just sitting there and the button is not pressed, remember you've got that pull-up resistor, it's going to be seeing 1. So if it sees 0, that means I what? That means I press the button. 
Okay, so what do I want to do if I press the button? Well, I want to print uh, button one was pressed. Okay. Okay, then I need to put a delay in here, so I'm going to do sleep point one. <coughs> then that just slows it down a little bit, so it's not just flying by. You can try to read those things too quick. It's good to put a delay in there. So now I'm going to say if gpio dot input button two equal equals zero. You know one of the biggest mistakes I see is I have students they try to do an if statement or a conditional with one equal and man that is a hard problem to find. Remember when you're doing conditionals it's always two equals. Okay and then we're gonna go print button two was pressed. Okay and then sleep Point one. All right. How does that look for a program? I think that looks pretty good. How do we save it? We do a Control O to write out. It says file name to write buttons.py. I like that, so I just click Enter, and then I Control X to exit out, and now I should be able to run it. When you're running a Python program that is going to play with these GPIO pins, you have to run it as sudo, as py as pi here you do not have access to these pins only super user has access to the pins you have to run the program sudo is super user python we want to run a python program what is the program buttons.py does that look good okay what does it do absolutely nothing why the buttons aren't pressed all eyes on button one so i come over here and i'm going to press it button one was pressed. I let up and it stops. I press it again. Button two, I press button two, button two was pressed. Button one was pressed. Button two was pressed. Boom! We are reading from these GPIO pins and now we've got something where we can t tell the state of the buttons. Well, what would that be used for? Well, maybe you want to turn on a light, an LED. When you press the button, you want the LED to go on. When you press it again, you want the LED to go off. Uh, maybe you would have this one over here. As you pressed it, you could sort of dim up or brighten up or brighten up or dim down an LED. You could have all types of different things happen when you press the button. But you have to know if the button is pressed or not. And so that's what this simple ex uh, example has been. How to do a simple read from the uh, GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. Okay guys, this has been lesson number 29. I'll probably come back today with another lesson showing you a little bit more, you know, kind of kind of a little bit more playing around with these uh, with these buttons and these input statements, but this is just a quick introduction. We'll do another lesson where we'll go into a little more depth. This is Paul McCorder with toptechboy.com. If you like my lessons, give me a thumbs up. Come on, man, just give me a thumbs up or share it. Maybe leave me a comment, you know, give me some feedback on these lessons. Let me know that there's someone out there actually listening. Paul McCorder, toptechboy.com. We will talk to you guys later.